off th to this specific case? Just y your reaction to seeing another one of these. It's always heartbreaking um, when we talk about our juveniles and, and crime, and especially when we're talking about violent crime. Um, we're hoping and praying that we're able to uh, create some programs and be able to do some things to curb this youth violence. It's, it's very discerning for us to look at someone 14 years old, 14, that's wanted for homicide. So we're definitely um, in this division very concerned about that trend and we're gonna make sure that we do everything that we can on our part to ensure that we are addressing this issue. And, you know, you speak about your part, you know, you guys, we, we see you on the streets, you know, out at events, you know, speaking to different community groups. I see, you know, you have the picture right up there of uh, Mothers of Murder Columbus uh, children. At what point, I guess, does it kind of move off the police and maybe move off the mayor's office, move off city council, move off community activists and move to the people in the household? Absolutely. So this is not just an enforcement issue. This is not just a police issue. This is not just a city entity issue, this is a community issue. Everyone should be concerned. Everyone should be appalled about the things that are going on and it's gonna take all of us uh, to be able to create something to uh, curb this violence. So um, we've been saying that since we got here, First Assistant Chief Potts and I, that community involvement is key in being able to address a lot of the issues that we're seeing. You wanna try to um, get these youth before they get to this point. You want to try to engage them. You want to try to make sure you're creating mentorship programs. You want to address the family issues. It's a holistic approach. It's not just about the kids. It's about the family. What's going on in the household? Are there jobs? You know, are there uh, programs for the family? Do we have counseling? So this issue is bigger than just the children. It's about the entire family, about the entire community. So it's incumbent upon all of us to step up and do our part not just city entities, not just police, not just the juveniles, not just the court systems, everyone, including your neighbors. Do you think it's um, unfair sometimes uh, from a police department perspective because um, you guys are sort of on, on the front lines, so to speak, and whenever things happen, well, the police aren't doing enough, the police aren't doing this, police aren't doing that. Do you think it gets you know unfair sometimes? <laughs> Yeah, but you know, that's part of our job. We're public servants. We understand, you know, the cry for wanting justice, the cry and concern about the crime that's increasing. That's on our backs and we get that and we, we own that because that's what we do. That's what we're here. We all took an oath to protect and serve, but also understanding that it's incumbent upon everyone, like I said, to step up and do their part. It's not just a police issue. We understand that a lot of people look at us and go, why is he back on the street? Or they look at us and say, why isn't anyone doing anything? There's so many things that are being done behind the scenes that people don't necessarily know about. There are a lot of collaborations that are occurring, not just between uh, local law enforcement agencies, not between just the courts and the, uh, you know, that, that system, but also with the community leaders. Like you said, we're involved with uh, Mothers of Murder Columbus Children. We're involved with We Are Linden. We're involved with our clergy. We're involved with Urban League, NAACP. We're, we're partnering with everyone to try to address these issues. Um, what do you think, you know, in your years of law enforcement and kind of seeing where things are going now, what, what do you think it is with kids right now? Because I think that's the, our viewers, they're wondering, what, what is the problem? So we've seen this increase over the past couple of years. Um, I'm not going to contribute this solely to this, but the pandemic and the civil unrest has had a huge impact on the things that we're seeing, gun legislation, the, the, um, the ability to be able to access guns so easily, the lack of conflict resolution. There's so many different things that we're looking at and we have to figure it out and we gotta figure it out soon. We gotta get a hold of our children. We gotta make sure that we're wrapping our arms around them. But I think that over the past couple of years with them being out of school, you know, with them not having access to maybe that one teacher that was that mentor for them, you know, that homeschooling, I think it affected the teens in such a way. And I don't think we've, uh, any of us, in the nation have recovered from the things that occurred over the past couple of years. So we're in a healing stage. We're trying to figure out how to recoup, how to get back some of the things that those children lost, some of the programmings. As you know, uh, PAL has been stood up in, in, in the organization, so the Police Athletic League. So we're trying to make sure that we're mentoring children. We're trying to make sure that we're getting back to that point where that, that one child trusts that teacher to be able to come to them and say, hey, I'm having issues. Hey, this is going on in my family so that we can get them the help that they need. From a community standpoint, what can folks do? And again, I just point back because I know this kid is on the loose right now, a 14-year-old. We always hear about you know not snitching and not coming up with the information. From a community standpoint, what do communities and families, if they have information on a kid that's, that's done something wrong, what, what can they do? What is their responsibility? The first thing that they should do is understand it's not about snitching. It's really about helping. 
We cannot help these children if we don't know what's going on. We can't help them if we don't know how to reach them and where to reach them. I encourage people to tell us. And tell us not when it gets to the point where they've already created this heinous crime. Tell us when you see the signs, you notice the, the, the little things, you notice the uh, different behavioral issues. Reach out to someone, whether it's a counselor, whether it's a teacher. Um, if they're doing uh, things like vandalism or something, give us the heads up. Let us know so that we can help them and so they won't get to that point where they won't get into the hands of the uh, groups or the gangs that are in the streets. We don't want our groups and gangs raising our children. We should be raising our children. We should be teaching them that there's something better, something that they can do that's more productive. So. Please tell us, if you know that there are children out here that are crying out for help, let us know. We're not trying to just lock every child up and throw away the key. That's not our goal. Our goal is to get them the help that they need to be able to have them be productive citizens. That's what we want. That's our ultimate goal. And speaking of that, I'm, I'm kind of glad you kind of mentioned that. What would you say to those folks who say, because we've, we've done stories on, especially, let's say, the Kia boys. And we've seen kids who've been arrested, you know, multiple times. And, and I'm sure there are people out there saying, you know, throw them in jail, lock, up, lock them up, you know, keep them there forever. What would you say to those folks? I would say that um, I understand. When you have a crime occur to you, when you, your car is stolen and you can't get to work or you can't take your children to school, it's an outrage, it's an inconvenience, it's, it's, it's a, a, a tragedy across the board. But we also have to understand, we're talking about 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 year olds. We have to figure out what happened. We gotta get to the root of the problem and the answer may not necessarily send them home. The answer may not be that. But we as a society, as a community, have to come up with a solution to be able to not only address the crime that they did and, and enforce the law, but also get them the help that they need. Because a lot of those children, they need counseling, they need uh, better supervision, they need to be back in the school, they need uh, you know, some sort of parental guidance. So there are different things that are occurring behind the scenes that we need to address. So while it's important for us to enforce that law and make sure that we are stopping children from stealing cars, stopping them from vandalism, stopping them from robbery, we also have to address the root of the problem because an 11 year old didn't just wake up and decide, I want to steal a car. Something has occurred you know, to get them to that point. So we have to make sure that we're addressing that as well. And Chief Potts, I know you, you were just out in uh, Linden, um, you know, this week meeting with kids. And um, how disappointing is it for you when you see these cases of, uh, you know, a 14 year old uh, charged with killing a 15 year old? And you were just out in the streets with kids that same age, kind of trying to connect with them. How disappointing when you see stuff like that? Um, it's heartbreaking. Um, Chief Ryan and I are both parents, um, and so when one child is murdered, when one child goes to prison, when we look at these kids um, and we see brown and black boys that are like her sons, brown and black girls that are like my daughter, um, it's disheartening. Um, disappointment is not a word for it. It's heartbroken. Uh, we have to find a way to save our kids, and so we're extremely passionate about saving them, which is why we're so accessible to the public, which is why we're doing everything we can, partnering with every organization that will have us, um, trying strategies every Monday and Wednesday uh, with our executive team. We are trying to find something that will stick. And so um, one murder is too many. But when you're talking about 10, 11 year olds going through the judicial system, what kind of future can they have if they're already labeled at 14 and 15 years old? So for us, it's heartbreaking. And when you talk about looking at it from a standpoint of a parent, I mean, you guys are parents, the uh, officers on the streets are parents, and, and your people. Do you think that people don't realize that, that when, when you cover these cases, it's, it's kind of a emotional and, and impacts you as well? It's what keeps us up at night. Um, Chief Brian and I probably spend more time than we should together, off duty and on duty, talking about how can we solve these crimes? How can we relate better to the community? What can we do to give the officers the support they need? You know, what resources can we come up with? Um, it's more than just resources. We, we have, Columbus has a plethora of resources to help youth violence, and we're trying to come up with more ways, but the issue is parental involvement. And there are some parents, we have parents who cry to us and say, I need you to find my kid, because if you don't find them, I'll be burying them. And for us, that's sad. You know, a parent is doing all they can, but what more can we do? These kids are going from group to gangs, and they're being recruited by older people 
to do crimes because they know that judicially, unless they get to murder, it's a slap on the wrist. Is there anything, uh, and I understand if you can't, but is there anything that you can reveal to the public, plans that you're working on in the year ahead, uh, working with community groups or any sort of youth programming to get kids off the street? Uh, is there anything that you can reveal to us that you're doing? So, uh, as you know, we're, we're doing a lot of different things that we're trying to make sure that, like she said, it sticks. We, want, we don't want to just do something and then just forget about it. We want something that's going to be sustainable to make sure that we're reaching the youth that are here now and the ones that are coming in the future. So I can't talk specifically about certain things, but I will let um, First Assistant Chief Potts tell you about a couple of different programs that we are doing that we can talk about. So as you know, we have the TAPS program. Um, we're looking at increasing our footprint in high schools, so we're talking to CCS about getting into high schools for a brotherhood, sisterhood program that we found to be extremely successful in Michigan. Um, we're looking at doing some more symposiums with our youth at the table because we can talk at them, but we need them to tell us what do they need in order for them to be successful. Um, I'm not going to give you all our plans because um, some things we want to be a surprise to the community, but every day we're working behind the scenes to come up with solutions. Um, it's not just about dog and pony shows. It's not just about their shaking hand and kissing babies. We want this to be sustainable. The reality is Chief Brian and I have a maximum of 10 years here and it's not about us. It's about what happens when we're gone and someone else is in the seat. Uh, something else I wanted to bring up too, uh, I've noticed that a lot of uh, crime as of late have involved young uh, girls too. Do you think there needs to be a focus, because we, we always focus on teenage boys, do you think there needs to be a focus on girls as well? Oh, absolutely. That's one of the reasons why when she spoke about the brotherhood and sisterhood, there is a focus on our young girls. You know, there, there, there are organizations right here in Columbus, the Commission on Black Girls. There are things that they're already doing that are focusing on our young, on our young women. But it's important upon us, especially being young women and growing up and, you know, go, going through some of the same things, the peer pressure, some of the issues that we know that they, they're different. So we have to make sure that we're focusing on them and wrapping our arms around them as well and making sure that their voices are heard. A lot of time the young girls, they don't feel hurt. They don't feel understood. So it's important that we are out there. We're trying to be the role models for them, uh, letting them know you can be whatever you want to be. You can do whatever you want to do. So we're both heavily involved in a lot of youth, uh, young girl mentorship programs. And uh, when you guys meet those uh, kids on the streets and they, you know, give you those smiles and give you those hugs, personally, how does that make you feel? I will tell you, um, being a girl that grew up in the hood, <laughs> coming from a, um, a certain neighborhood, I never would have thought that I would be sitting here in this seat talking to you today. So knowing, you know, coming from my humble beginnings and understanding, you know, that I, when I walk out and I, I see young girls and they go, I want to be the chief. And I'm like, you absolutely can be the chief. You 100% you can. It's, it makes my heart melt to know that there are people out there that actually look up and say, I want to be you one day. Because that was me. I was looking at people going, I want to be you one day. So um, just having that, it humbles me. And, I, and I'm extremely grateful to be in a position to be able to give someone that hope and, 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 and let them know that you can be whatever you want to be. Oh, I echo. <laughs> um, we, we love when a community um, comes out and shows us love. Um, and, and as Chief Ryan said, grew up single parent household in the hood. My mom was on welfare until she was able to get a better job. Grew up in violence, been a victim of violence and trauma. And so when I'm talking to these kids out here, I'm not talking from a faraway place that I don't understand. I'm talking from a place that, that could have been me in one of those correctional facilities. Um, luckily, I had a mother who stayed on me, um, and we had a village that surrounded us. And so we want to be that village for kids who may not have it. And, and that's why this is so important for us to save these kids. It's not about enforcement. We've said that from day one. It's about making sure we don't bury any more children. And I guess if you could uh, talk to some of these kids who may be involved in the Kia boys, selling drugs on the streets, what, what would you tell them? What, what sort of meshes, message would you want to give to them? I would say to them, you have a future. Stop. You st stop living in the moment and start thinking about your future and what you want to do. And I would say to the parents, don't give up on your kids. Help us help them. 
we can figure this out together. It's important for us to band together to make sure that these kids aren't just living in this moment, but you're gonna grow up. You're gonna be fathers. You're gonna be mothers. You're gonna be brothers, uncles. You can go to college. You can join the police department. You can be that person that reaches back and brings up your younger brother, your younger sister, or your younger nieces and nephews. Stop, please stop. Stop and think about what you're doing. Stop and think about how it's affecting families. It's not just about you still in that car. You're taking something away from a mother who that may be her only transportation to take her children to the hospital, her only transportation to take her children to get food. Stop and think about what you're doing and please know that we're here and we want to help you. We want to help you to become productive citizens, but you got to stop. That's my message. Uh, anything else you guys maybe want to add that you think is important that I didn't ask? Or? Um, that we're always working. We're always working to better build a better, safer Columbus. Um, I think we've done a, a phenomenal job, not patting ourselves on the back, but we came here almost two years ago and we have not stopped. <laughs> the momentum is still going. We have phenomenal police officers that are every day giving their all um, to try to save these kids. And so we're just asking the community just to keep working with us, keep doing what they've been doing. Um, they've been helping us and we are so appreciative of it. Um, and if I can leave them, the youth with a message, just we love them. We love them, we want to save them, we want to help them. Um, and, and I'm optimistic about 2023.